Hey, hey, folks, March 5th, we got the Gramercy live app, baby. Now you got a little runway, so you can really get those tickets, spread the love, share the link, and spread your cheeks. Yeah, get there. We're going to have a great show. We're coming back with a passion, with a, with, what's that a called? A vengeance. With a vengeance, baby. Yes. Die hard vengeance and with a vengeance. Me. We're coming March 5th. Get the tickets now. Small venue. It will sell out. Don't be thrown by only 11 people coming last time. Yes. This is the one. Long break in between specials or shot shows. I don't know what time it is. I'm gay. March 5th. Be there. Yeah. Gramercy Theater. Going to be a lot of hot guests, live guests, fun time. It's going to get wacky in there. Remember, we only give out half of it, and the back half is on the Patreon. So you might as well come see that bitch in the flesh. Yes. And go to the Patreon. Do both. Do one. Do nothing. Oprah Winfrey's fat. Be there. She fluctuates. Hey, Mark. Fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories! Hit her in the face with a surfboard! And then the duck fell out of his bag! <laughs> Surf's up! And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List! Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey, we are here. We're back. I uh, I just had a stop and chat on the street. Oh, with who? I don't want to say who, but don't you feel like I'm getting so busy? I feel like the, like it's Ramon. He's like, hey, you want to? He's like, we should. We got to catch up. It's the holiday season. Let's get together. Let's get a drink with our mutual friends. And we'll all get an eggnog. And I'm like, I can't. That's what I'm thinking. I, I don't have the time. Yeah, this is what's great about having a child. You because it gives you the ah, oh, the baby has AIDS. I gotta yes. keep it moving. Blood shooting out of his eyes. Yes. He's shitting yellow. Uh, his dick fell off. His <laughs> feet are too big. I'll see you later. That's a tough night. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's good. You could go okay. And I, I think now, and and maybe you're at this place. Anyways, I'm better. You do. I do have this thing of like, all right, I don't. Oh, yeah, you got to keep it moving. Yeah. Sorry. I got no time for that. We had a thing last night at a comedy club where a guy kept coming up. And oh, after a while, you just go, yeah. okay, you do this. And then they go, oh, my God, I'm yeah. sorry. No, that's all right. Save that, too. Take all <laughs> that and just keep it moving. Uh, yes, yes. But sometimes you're like, we're at a restaurant. We're I friends. Know. I know. I, I I love everybody. Appreciate. Hey, great job. Yeah. Big fan. My father's gay. It's beautiful. We appreciate it. But then some people come up and they're like, hey, you know, boy, I was talking to the thing the other day. And you go, oh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. All right. And then another thing. Yes, and you go, okay, yes. that's great. And then they leave and come back. Oh, and you're like, this yeah. is, I can't abide. The and, dude does not abide. And it's one thing if they came back and they just sat there and and just were still. But they have to come back and go, hey, I'm back. And it's, it's like a do-do-do-do. The scroll comes out. You know, just be there. You can't come back. I, I, I used to say this with Louie all the time when we would hang out and people, I mean, we still hang out occasionally, but when we were on tour, people would come up and go, hey, Mr. CK, I think you're a genius and you're brilliant and you're beautiful and, and God bless. And you go, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And then beautiful. the guy leaves and he's like, can I just say, I, I, he comes back and you can't come back. No, you're out. And I always feel like, uh, I used to always do the line from Sounds of the Lambs when she's first interviewing uh, Lecter and then she hands him the, the Q&A thing mm. and he goes, no, no, you were doing so well. Like, oh, you know, you, you, you were nailing it. Yeah. And then you blew point. it. You blew it. You, you had back. it. But I think the first part goes well. Yes. By the way, this is rare. This is one in a thousand people. The per first part goes okay. And they're like, oh, they were receptive to that. Yeah, let me let me give you a little more, yeah. and then you go. No, I don't need to hear about your aunt. Right, right. It's true. I think they get the dopamine. They're like, oh, that was that was good. So I want to feel that again. Right. But and I've been that guy as a yacht. My Philip Seymour Hoffman sure. story, famously, and sure. uh, and you do it with Jerry Still. So, oh yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> I sent him a joke the other day. Not a, not a joke I wrote, but like a, a just a funny anecdote. And it, it took a while, but I got a ha ha, and I was like. I'm out. I threw the phone across the room. I jerked off. That was it. That's brutal. It's it's hard. It's weird how there's like this feeling of it's a person, but he's so big. Yeah, yeah. That you you, you visualize this large, of course, 
entity. But he's just an insecure heeb himself. He's up in his ivory tower going, oh, I can't get it up. My son's gay. My dad's Jewish. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> well, that's a uh, Cal. Yes, um, Cal signs. But um, what was I going to say? Oh, I heard a great quote. You're going to love this. Well, I love Maybe you've quote. heard it. Well, let, me, let me just jerk off into your mouth and see if it hits the back of your throat. Please hit the hangy ball. Um... We're always comparing our insides to everybody else's outsides. What do you oh, make of that? Oh, wait a minute. That's heavy. That's heavy duty. It's big. It's good. It's nice. Because you're, you're feeling all your feelings. Yes. So in your mind, you're like, I suck. Everybody hates me. I'm a piece of shit. I'm a fraud. I'm ugly. Boy, I'm you, gay. You know me well. And then you look on Instagram or everywhere else, and you go, oh, my God. He's shooting bows and arrows right. with Rogan. He's doing Madison Square Garden. That's their outside. Ah. We can't hear their inside. Yeah, the insides are ugly. Yeah, I'm sure everyone else's insides are bad. Yeah, I like that. Boy, that's a that's a hell of a quote. I love a quote. Whoa. Oh, that's keep, a hell of a keep, keep that over there. What is that? A little extra guac on that burrito? Keep it over there. Yikes. Uh, uh yeah, yeah. I, I like that. The outside's the inside. And you know, I've told you my other other quote I like. If you could if everybody threw their problems in a pot, you'd take yours out first. Right. Which, I don't know with the kid. Maybe put that kid right in that boiling water. Well, it's a nice problem to have. If I didn't have a kid, you'd be sad. But that's a lot of crying. Yeah. A lot of uh, a lot of not sleeping. Yeah. It's it lack of sleep. It's really turning the volume, turning the heat up on all the, the car horns are like, fuck you, you piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. The is heat. It, oops, sorry. No, sleep is big. The heat up is a real thing because uh, they say during heat waves, crime goes up. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Uh. Yes, it's it's funny how everything is is hit mentally, and uh, you you just like you're angry, you're a little pissed off more, you're a little agitated, you're sweaty, you bump into a guy, you're gonna cut his head off. I'm telling you what, I mean the leaf blower lady. I talked to the leaf oh, blower. Oh, the blower last week. This lady, she's back, and I had to repost and. and uh. and, and I can't even tell. And I have like. OCD, obviously, I'm a mental case, but I'm like literally sitting on the couch with the baby. He's asleep. It's beautiful. I'm staring at his tits. I, I couldn't be happier. I'm glowing. He's glowing. <laughs> Love a baby tit. We're just thrilled. And then I hear the... Uh, and I shouldn't move because he's perfectly content. Yeah. But I'm like, and I'm not even going to yell anything because he's sleeping, so I can't yell. Right. But I just have to get my eyes on this couch cunt yes so i'm like i'm balancing him and i'm like lifting the shade with the foot because oh, i can man. continue to cradle him it's like cirque du soleil because i just need to look at her and be like you piece of fucking human shit it is funny how we have to look at people hey like you get cut off you're like i gotta see this motherfucker you yes know? funny how that is i just want to i want to i swear to god i want to shoot her with a uh well, a, well, a get, fucking gun give me a, i'm a police sketch cunt give me the full thing i'm gonna draw her fat ass well i, I put it on insta story a couple times she's older okay fucking shitty hag piece of shit okay wrinkle wrinkle hag little saggy tits. maybe blondish hair oh. i would say late 50s right. maybe early 60s pony Tail. Oh, pony! And she's okay. got a husband, a cuck husband. Yeah, and what he does, he has a broom. Oh, what is that? Are they landscapers? What's going on here? No, they're assholers. He stands there. He's got a pan, or whatever the fuck, dustpan. Dustpan. Yes, dustpan diamond. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the dustpan. I'm happy with that one. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> He's got the dustpan and the broom, and she blows them all over the place. Pan Diamond, how'd you put that together? Where did that even come from? Ah. <laughs> he blows. She blows all the leaves in his general direction, and then he oh, sweeps them up. But what a team queef! But so I had a moment the other day. This was fun. So you know, with, with the baby, you got to relieve each other. She comes out and pisses on me. She takes the baby. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to Starbucks. And it's like you, you leave those doors. And you're like. Oh, the sun is of shining, course. birds are flying, leaf blowers are going. And so I'm walking to Bucks, and there's a different leaf blower lady. Oh, my God. It's an epidem. And I was on the phone with my mother on the old, um, what's it called again? Telephone. Raycon. Ah. The Raycons. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Happy holidays. Uh, I got the, the, the air muffs on. Whatever the fuck. Gaycon. 
And I'm walking up the street, and there's a new leaf blower. I didn't, I didn't know there was more than one leaf blower. Are you getting leaf blowers in your neighborhood? Not a wink, not a blower, not a leaf, not a rake. I think because Queens is more the birds. domesticated. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to have to deal with this when you go to the uh, the BK broiler over there. Uh, BK nights. So anyways, I'm walking up the street, and there's a different, totally different thing. So I went full out loud, passive aggressive on the phone, which was quite fun. Oh, that's a big one. She's doing it, and I go, sorry, I got to talk louder. There's a fucking lady leaf blowing here. I'm Man. like, it blows my mind that people leaf blow in New York goddamn city. Yeah. It's so rude. And my mother's like, what are you, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> and the lady was doing like a, what the hell? Because Man. I think they don't realize. It's like every these people don't. I don't think they're thinking like, oh, everyone else is hearing this. Like, you know when you're yeah. making a noise, you can't see that it would be annoying. Yeah. Because you're doing it. Like, if I'm doing this, I'm just drumming. Right. But you're over there going, can you fucking stop doing that? Yeah, yeah. But because it's your action, you're, I'm hearing it. My thing is fun. Of course. I get it. I totally get it. But they don't get that. And then they get mad at you. But if I was drumming and somebody was like, hey, that's annoying, I'd go, oh, shit, sorry. But when you go, hey, leaf cunt. What's up with the blowing? They go, it's a free country. And then they go, woo, and your hair goes like this. Well, these are the different personality types. I I guess I'm so. the same way. I'm like, people, if, if one person is mad at me, I was like, I'll just go commit suicide. I'm so sorry. Same. And by the way, that phone is teetering. And oh, it's a real nuts. teeter. I think because I was doing this. That's yeah. what it is. Uh, uh, there it goes. All right. It committed suicide. Well, here's uh, what kills me about the leaf queef. Yes. And this is, uh, this is going to get weird. but I can't wait. Don't you feel like nobody does anything? Like if I, you know, everybody's like, I'm writing a screenplay. You check in 10 years later. How's that screenplay? Oh, things came up, blah, blah, blah. Hey, I'm going to go uh, join the gym. How'd that gym go? I never got around to it. The leaf blowing, she gets around to. She does it. Isn't that frustrating? It is frustrating. She's a go-getter. She's a go-getter. A blow-getter. Well, yes, a blow-getter. So go get a field and find some real leaves and foliage. Yes. You come guzzler. Get a broom. It'll be exercise too, you old fucking asshole. Yeah, move those jiggly arms, you old bag. I hate it. And today, I think you'd be proud of me today. So now, like I said, I'm just on edge. I'm angry. I'm crazy. Sure. I, I'm like, a, I'm hot. You're like Michael Douglas in Falling Down. You're going to just start cutting heads off. I, out there. I, I can't wait. I, I love that film, by the way. Although oh, I haven't really? seen it in 20 years. I don't know if it holds up. I don't think it does. I can't imagine it's great. But. The idea of it was so fun. Fun idea. Then. Very relatable. And as a boy, everything's good. You're like, That's wow. True. Yeah. It's like I was saying, like, when you're a kid, any joke you get is brilliant. Oh, kid jokes blew my tits off. Like, if there's a joke you understand, like, I just watched The Lost Motherfuckers. I'm trying to watch The Lost Boys. Oh, yeah. We were watching The Lost Boys, which is a very silly film. It's vampires in California. Although it's, it's very beautiful and it's fun. But I always remember there was the joke the grandfather has TV. He doesn't have a TV. And then the Corey uh, Haim or whatever, RIP, is like, but you have TV Guide. And he's like, well, I have TV Guide, so I don't have to watch TV. Oh. And I remember thinking that was so funny. That is the funny. idea of somebody reading Full House. Uncle Jesse gets sad. Yeah, like, I don't need a TV. I'm wow, running. that is funny. I'll, I'll take water. an ice water. Yeah, no ice, like the border. No but ice. But it's like when I saw the movie when I was nine years old. I remember being like, "That's so funny." Yeah. And now, if someone did that, you'd be like, "Ah." I mean, we've talked about it. The uh, well, first of all, that's why with a kid you can go, "Woohoo." Peekaboo, and they're like, go! Oh, what is this, some kind of sorcery? Right. But it's the dumbest joke of all time, and, or like, got your ear, or got your nose, and the cord, or whatever it is. But I've, we've talked about before, uh, uh, Screech, you cantaloupe. Who are you calling a cantaloupe, you melonhead? When I Gold. heard that, I went, oh, and I still think that holds up. Very funny. Very funny. When I heard that, I turned the TV off, I called my grandmother, I said, I love you, and I hung up the phone. Well, the other great joke from Screech is uh, when they're movie stars and the lady says, uh, boy, your arms are so firm, and he says, it's my elbow. I work out. <laughs> I'm like, that's very good. That's good. That's very funny. Some Jew in California wrote that. Whoa! Wow, Not they're, in these they're, times. They're good writers. Not in these times, sir. There's a genocide. Oh, oh well, Zionist, Schmionist, who the hell knows? Eh, hey, whatever you're gonna do. Boy, Screech is getting a lot of play on this app. We got the Screech talk with Save with the Bell, then the Dustpan Diamond. Rest in peace, Screech. All right, rest, rest in Screech. What a what a uh, freedom of Screech. <laughs> what, what a uh, run he had with, uh, you know, uh, Save by the Bell, the college years, porn. 
then oh, stand up, right. or stand up, then porn, and then stabbed. I'm not sure. He, did he get stabbed to death? I no, don't think, I think he, he OD'd got stabbed. Later or something I think he like had that. cancer. I don't know. Maybe I have s- no idea. Somebody saw, I think, the college years and was like, that's it. <laughs> I got to off this motherfucker. <laughs> Got this motherfucker right here. <laughs> um, he uh, was a big comedy thief, too, from what I understand. Ah, uh, yeah, I could see that. It was the old joke. What do you do if you open for a screech? Crowd work. Oh, Because he'd, he'd nab your shit. I also heard a great story. Maybe we've told this before. I don't know. That in his contract... By the way, now that people are... When people are dead, I feel like it's fine to shit on them, right? It's what? It's okay to shit on them because they're well, dead. Yeah, especially like a screech. I don't know if you should be shitting on, uh, you know, Jimmy Carter. <laughs> Or Obama or somebody. <laughs> They're alive. But when they die. Ah. Uh, um, but uh, there's a big, I guess there was a thing in his contract that said Dustin, Di- and this could be a wives' tale. This is a story I heard that the words Dustin Diamond have to be at least 40% bigger font than Screech. Because mm. they didn't want him advertising as Screech. Right. Like, my own guy. I see. But people wanted to see Screech, so they would make a poster. That it was like seven feet high, Dustin Diamond, so they could uh-huh. have a four foot screech. Oh, so he would have said he had like a like a billboard. That's a fun loophole. Just so they could have a massive screech. I love it. That's great. Well, I mean, screech is selling the tickets. Let's be honest. Yeah, of course, Zoics. Yeah, I mean, you went. Uh, I remember Monica Lewinsky went on a radio show, and they were like, "So." Bill Clinton jizz. And she was like, I'll talk about anything but that. And they were like, okay, so we got a uh, traffic in lanes as a mattress over here. <laughs> like, they, what, once we don't talk about that, what else, what are you doing here? You know, they just went, that's going to be 40 degrees outside, lightly shower. There's a mattress over here. Um, <laughs> well, I was just playing, it's funny you just mentioned Lewinsky. I was just playing some trivia game with my family over Christmas. We, we're all games, games or gossip Game's or tough. nothing. And uh, there was a, it was a game like, Boomer, it's called Hey Boomer or Boomer, what? whatever. And the teams are supposed to be everyone born before 1980 and okay. everyone born after 1980. Oh, all right. So I'm, a, but all the kids were playing. I hope it wasn't change oil or, uh, you know, drive a stick. No, it was trivia. So, but it's me and like Sarah was born in 78. So she's on the other team. Everyone's mm. on the other team. It's me and a bunch of school children. Oh, you got this. Well, I was like dominated because it was like, what year and day did JFK get shot? And the kids don't know. They're nine. 63? Yeah, November 22nd. Oh. Which is funny because it was the day after. And I had just randomly been like, hey, it's 60, uh, 70 years ago. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, 60. Um, but any farts. I will never forget that now, by the way. Now you told me that. <laughs> That is right in the cork board. Store it right in there. Well, so one of the questions was, um, what what clothing item became synonymous with Bill Clinton or something like that. Mm. And, well, it was the blue dress. Oh. Or what, I don't know how they phrased it. Yeah, because you think, it, you, I thought you meant his clothing. Right, but whatever, whatever the hell they phrased it, it was about the dress. But I was like, this is hilarious because we're playing this game with a bunch of children. Oh, yeah. And the reason the dress is famous is because there was cum on it. Jizz. Like, it doesn't, it's funny, that's just part of our Yeah, yeah, lexicon. thank you. I mean, I guess the game wasn't really for kids anyways, because the other one was about a guy's head getting blown off, so. Right, right. I don't care for these, um, these, uh, have you heard of this Cards Against Humanity? Oh, yeah, I've played that a bunch. I think that's a game for people who aren't funny. Right. Because it's like, oh, man, it says, uh, it says Leaf Blower. I'm going to put down Butt Sniffer. Oh! <laughs> Oh shit! Your grandma's going. Woo! <laughs> this is wild, baby. Yeah, it's it's fun for about twenty minutes, and then you you go. Twenty All right. minutes. Twenty minutes. You get a good round. Twenty uh, minutes of some fun things. Oh, but. oh it's, it says pooper scooper. Ah! This is a riot. I know, and. It, <laughs> It's hard because my family gets very into all of these games, and then there's like adult version and kid version and sex version and X version right, and all right. this stuff. And it is like we could just make some shit up, of course. Tell some stories. I mean, I've come in a bunch of women's faces, exactly. and then they couldn't see well, and then they had to drive me to the airport. I mean, uh, I can tell that story. That's a game. <laughs> <laughs> that I want to play with the family. Who can get to the airport with jizz face? True story. I haven't thought about that in a long time. Well, yeah, well, it wasn't a virgin flight. Right. But yeah, I hate those uh, those goofy games because I'm like, you know, if you listen to us talk at a Starbucks for 11 minutes, your your ears would bleed if you think this is wacky. Oh yeah, we 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 should just, if we made our own cards, that would be funnier. 
It should, you know, the N-word is oh. in there and fucking suck my ass. Yes, yes, exactly. Jizz on a kid, a retarded kid, whatever it is. That's card number one. Jack, are you adding something there? Well, there, there's a game called The Game of Things, and it's a lot closer to, like, you do your own stuff, and mm. it's 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 like you write down your own answers for a lot of these things. Uh. It's a little different, but it's I've had the exact same feeling for years, and I've actually said to people in front of them by accident, like, yeah, Cards Against Humanity is for people who aren't creative themselves. I've yeah. said that, and then they're like, I love Cards Against Humanity, and I feel guilty, so well, I don't say it anymore. They're not funny people, and they need the card to be like, look, look at this. This is crazy. And they think they thought of it in a weird way. But well, it's- It feels like a perfect Larry David app. They bust it out, and you're like, have you guys played this? And he's furious. Yeah. What game is fun is uh, Heads Up. Which I think we oh, played our own Heads version Up. of uh, that here. Love Heads Up. That's fun. That's a Patreon. We should do that. We did it on Patreon. <laughs> I knew it. That's a. We had a good idea with that. I thought we had a great time on there, and then I, I don't know what I don't know how to figure out the Patreon, but I thought that was a damn good one. Yeah. Playing games, Tonight Show style. Whatever. Heads Up is big. I think you were had quit boozing by then, but we used to play Drunk Heads Up, and man, does that get crazy. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to... Uh, yell and shout and try to come up with things yeah and it gets heated you know when you're like not uh what's his face ah oh, shit hold on not joe biden but his son and they're like harvey weinstein you're like no no joe <laughs> biden's son and they're like uh joe pepitone you're like what are you doing you just want to tackle the guy i know it gets for this one of the most frustrating things in life is when you are thinking of something and the other person's not and you feel like they should because but it's hard because you're like, I don't know. Because I've been on both sides. Sure, sure. When the person's yelling at you and you're like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, if I knew, I would say the fucking thing. Of course, of They're course. Like, Black, come. My mother. I'm like, right. Michael Jordan. Right. Akeem Olajuwon. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Matepe <laughs> Macumbo. <laughs> Macumbo. <laughs> That's good. Oh, no. Um, oh, I think I started to tell a story oh, 48 sorry. minutes ago. But I think, because I said, I think you'd be proud of me, and I said, I'm going to come in your throat, and we got all derailed. Ah, well, we came to a screeching halt. Screech. R.I.P. Screech. This episode's dedicated to Dustin Diamond. D.D. And all the dreamers out there. There's Dustin Diamond, there's Diamond Dallas Page. Oh, yeah. He was the big fuck-up who started yoga and saved some lives or something. Oh, yeah. Which I don't really buy. Yeah, and then there's the Diamond Lane, and then there's Diamond Status. Diamond, Diamond Lounge. Yeah. Or no, what is it called? Delta Lounge. Delta Lounge. Sky Lounge. Sky Lounge. Sky, Sky Miles. Sky uh, is the limit. Had a great moment Limits at the, the, sky. the United Lounge. I uh, I walk into the United Lounge and I, I scan my boarding pass and went, eh, eh, eh. and I go, whoa, hey, just letting you know, I'm I'm a regular here. I'm a big United guy. And they go, your account is uh, over. You, you sign up for a year. And it's been a year. And I'm like, oh, well, how much is it to re-up? And they go, 550 bucks. I was like, geez, that's a pretty penny. And they go, well, you want to use miles? And I go, yeah, how many miles do I have? They're like, eight kajillion million. And I was like, all right, miles it is. I'm in the same way. I never use my miles. I have 375,000 miles. But people tell you you should use them because they can just fuck you and go, we don't do miles anymore. That's true. And I would use 5,000 miles, and I would work now. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. The Proclaimers. Ah, is that a one-hit one? I believe so. I think they're Canadian. Ugh. They feel Canadian, don't they? They do. You know who else feels Canadian is a Chumbawamba. I get knocked down, down. but I, I get, get up, up again. Right. Scoop it up and do 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 Chumbawamba, okay. maybe British, yeah. What is a Commonwealth? Virginia, Massachusetts. What? I yeah. thought it was Canada. Canada. No, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the Commonwealth of Virginia. What am I thinking They're of? They're like states, but it also says Commonwealth. I don't. The short answer is I don't know, but I okay. know Virginia and Massachusetts are Commonwealth. Yeah. They're like, yeah, the fucking Commonwealth. Yeah. I, I don't know what that means. It's like old English bullshit, I think, from 1629. Okay. They went, all right, this is a commonwealth here. He and they had a bell and some yes. bullshit. Yes, a town crier. Yeah. John crier. But like, you go to like Nevada, it's not a commonwealth. No, no, there's no wealth there. Four of the 50 states use commonwealth. Oh, let me see if I can go with the other two. Uh, you want to guess them? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Good. Uh, Massachusetts. What did I say? Virginia. That's two. Uh, I'm thinking maybe Pennsylvania. Don't give it away. Hold I'm on. Look at you. I don't want to look at you. Hold on. Commonwealth. Hold on. It's 
Got to be Northeast, uh, Commonwealth. Know. Heads up. Virginia. Maryland, maybe? I'm going to say Maryland, Pennsylvania, but that's not my final answer. Let me think, let me think, let me think, let me uh, think. Let me just put it on the board here. We Certainly got Virginia, not Ohio. Mass. Not North Carolina. Pennsylvania, and we need one. Virginia Udo and Mass, the only two I, I hear it said. Virginia feels weird, but. Commonwealth of Virginia. I'm um, New England, maybe. I'm going to say Pennsylvania. What was the other one I said? Mass. No. What Maryland. Maryland. I'm going to say Pennsylvania, Maryland. You got anything? Uh, what the hell? I'll throw in fucking Utah. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. Michigan? Pennsylvania's correct. Yo! The other one is actually a southern state. It's Kentucky. Oh. I almost said Kentucky. Oh, I almost said Kentucky. Forget I, about Kentucky. It says, uh, ultimately, these four states are commonwealths because their constitutional drafters declared they were. The commonwealth title does not confer any special legal significance, but the word highlights that the state's governments were intended to serve the well-being of the people. Oh, all right. It's almost well, like a trans nice. woman. Kentucky's not like, so, it's like south but north. It's yeah. a weird one because it's like, yeah. you know, you got Cincinnati's right there. and uh, Interesting. What? It's like a trans person. like. I'm declaring I'm a commonwealth. You go, okay, okay, whatever you say. It's very weird, doesn't it? It's like, it's like feels so southern, but not southern at the same time. Yeah. Tennessee, I, I got some beef with, too. Hmm. It's too middle. I'm a southern cunt. And yeah. so they're like, oh, we're southern. And I'm like, you're in the middle. Right. But I'm not going to start a war over it. Well, I've, I've mentioned it many times. The people in Colorado consider themselves like the West. And yes. they're like, oh, I've heard people even say West Coast. Oh, coast. Which Get I'm out like, of here. It's not a coast. No Words coast. have meanings. No coast. But, coast uh, to coast. Folks. Hey, hey. We're here to tell you about a little something called Patreon. <laughs> Ooh, if you're not on it, you're missing out. You're crazy. All kinds of fun games, live apps, yucks, TV shows, chit chat, you name it. Everything is on there. There is hours and hours and out for hours and hours. Oh, just tons. We've watched Kirby. Th- we should do that one. We should do Porno Gill, one of the best episodes. Oh, yeah. There's some great Musqueef TVs where we're doing watch alongs on Seinfeld, watch alongs with Kirby Enthusiasm, watch along with comedy specials, Chris Rock, comedian. Yeah. Everything. Dave Chappelle. Then every live episode we've ever done. I know some people hate the episodes. I love them. Chris Stefano, Giannis Papas, mm-hmm. Michelle Wolf. Ari Shafir, Shane Gillis. Are you garbage? Yep. Yes. Crazy. Shane's in there. That's worth the price of admission. And then there's just extra episodes. We're doing full extra episodes on there. Hear them now, Chuck. You got some stats? Yeah. There's over 177 hours. Wow. Of, of- That's longer than John Franco was stuck in The Rock. <laughs> It's over. That's oh, yeah. that's just an exclusive, James. exclusive content to What'd the I Patreon. Say? John, fuck. And we do have we do have the initial every every Wednesday we post uh, an OG Tuesdays episode. Um, we're up to like 76, 77 right now. Yes, all they're all remastered, so they Whoa! sound way better. It's the sound amazing. is way louder. All the ads are cut out. Woo! Plus, all the new episodes for the past couple of years now on the Patreon, all the ads are cut out. So no if you ads. Don't hear ads. That's, that's where you go. Price no right ads. Plus, like I said, Everything. 177 hours of exclusive oh, Tuesday with yes. bonuses. And there's an, if you sign up now, there's an exclusive three-hour Shane Gillis comedy special. He shot it just for our <laughs> yes, Patreon. Yes, that's right. It's him just doing three hours of his nastiest, naughtiest stuff. And you can see it on our Patreon only. We got Dave Chappelle doing four hours just about trans people. It's amazing. It. He hits his leg 500 times. You got to see it. So sign up for the Patreon today. Do it. Do it now. Get on it. That's lunch. And you can hear the origin of that's lunch. It's all pipes. Hear it all. He is a baby. Let me get right to this story I started a couple days ago. Coaster. Because I let me... Let me. Oh, oh, that was an inch away from the floodgates being full on Katrina levy. Wow, that is a real brick shit house pants you got there. They look <laughs> yeah. brick. It's brick of color. That, brick red. It. It's a crayon. Brick red. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a, a jazz guy. You know, brick red. <laughs> this, He's good. <laughs> this big pen and brick red. Oh uh, yeah. And uh, red skeleton. Red buttons. Red fox. Red skelter. Red rum. Red State. Oh, Red State Nate. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the story. Yeah, here comes story. a story. Here it comes. So I'm riding the old subway in here. Mm. And uh, oh, I never think I never told you the story about the fucking crazy kook I had last week. Oh, either. I never finished that me. story. But anyways, 
I'm in the subway, and, you know, I'm just furious now. I got all this furious anger. I'm sleepy. Furious anger. And <laughs> there's, like, the subway has, like, the three-seater. There's three seats yes, in a row. Yes, yes. And a lady was sitting in the middle, just, like, the middle seat. It's like when urinals, when someone uses the middle. Right. I'm like, why are you in the middle seat? And obviously she doesn't want someone to sit there. So I went in. I got my big winter coat and my backpack. Yes. And I just went... <laughs> And squeezed in because I'm, I'm on the end over here and where legs flush, love it. elbow in here, and you can feel love. her. She does like an inch over, and I'm so happy with it. I've never been so happy with myself. I'm big like, coat, big you, coat. Because the idea is, if you're mad for me to sitting here, that means you want three seats, a hundred percent. And if you want space, take the first seat, yeah. then there'll be a space, and then someone can sit here, and now both of us have space. That's the only way. It's a brilliant argument because you're doing the right thing, and it. You're, but you're not doing anything wrong, even though we know what you're doing. But she can't argue it because she's in the middle like a fucking coos. And if you want some space, just slide on over. I wish you were there because I would have put you on the oh. other side. And we could have really, we could have done this. We just talked yes. with this fat asshole sitting here. We could have done a cunt sandwich. But you could feel her like, you jerk. But I'm like, well, what? so you just get three seats? Yeah, who's the jerk? You're the jerk. And in the past, I would stand there and be like, look at this asshole taking up three seats. And now I'm a new man, Jack. I love it. I just went... <laughs> Fired it all in her ass and sat there, and I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm yawning and st- elbowing her in the tits. Oh, I love it. And uh, yeah, so that was that was fun. That's big. Now, did did she huff and puff like a like a big dragon? No real huff and puff, but I I can feel her. But probably again, this is where I'm psychotic. Yeah. I'm like, take that, you whore, and she's probably just like, oh, yeah, subway. No, no, no. I think he did the right thing. But but here's what bugs me, and then we can move on. Is the fact that she's gonna go home and go some crazy big coat cunt sat next to me on the train. Can you believe this city? It's gone to shit. And no one's ever going to go, did you did you sit in the middle? Exactly. She yeah. did sit in the middle. She's a middle sitter. Yes, like Tennessee. How do you feel about a big coat? I love a big coat. This coat is the best purchase I ever made in my life. That was that, 800 bucks? 500 bucks. Wow. But it was about seven years ago, and that's okay. seven winners. I wear it's, it's a designer, Jerry. Andrew Mark. Ah, yes. I don't know what that means. Me but neither. It was Bloomingdale's, but... Uh, Look at this big coat. It's stylish, and it's... Uh, it's a hell of a purse. You look like a Serbian uh, Marine in that thing. Well, also, it's it's thick, but surprisingly, with the buttons unbuttoned, you can wear it when it's 50 degrees. Mm. When it's 10, you button up, you wear a hat, warm. All right. When it's warm, you, you let it fly. Let the buttons fly. Yeah, I can see the inside lining. You got the AM in there. That's that's how you know it's designer. Oh, it's it's a, it's a real beauty. So you feel like, at the time, you're like... God, this is a lot of money, but then you wear it 120 days in a row, a seven years in a row. What's that? 30 cents a wear? How the hell did you afford that puppy seven years ago? That's 500 simoleons. Well, 2015. That's the year it all busted open. Last comic standing, so. Comedy Central half hour. My, uh, That's it. Uh, look at you now. All right. Well, hey, good to have you. Yeah, a big coat's a big purchase, but if it's going to last you... But you're not a right big coat guy. I feel like you have to be, you're, you're like running in between people and up and down stairs. I'm nimble. I don't like to take up room. I like to get in and out. I sit in the middle seat and I move on. Well, <laughs> I just think you got a thin jacket over there. Yeah, but that thing is warmer than my dad's taint. I think we've had this conversation before, too, I just realized. Put that puppy on. I'd rather not. All right, it might not fit you. You got long arms. Sure do. Too long. These are too short. I got to roll things up. I wish I could shrink them, yeah, my arms. Not... Uh, look at this. I'm like one of those car wash things. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. Daddy long arms. Um, um, let me just say this. Please. Where are you at on the word? Now, this is going to sound weird, but I was walking down West Broadway, and I see the chock full of nuts guy. Sure. You know that guy? The, the scent is wafting all over yeah. Manhattan. And they know what they're doing. They got that aroma in the air. What is that? Honeysuckle or chestnut on an open fire? I don't know what it is. Not sure. It's some kind of aroma. They got a spice on there that really hits the old factory. Mm. But uh, I'm walking by and I go, what the fuck is a chalk? Not a chalk Staten. Not a Chuck Jones. What's a chalk? Chalk full of. Yeah. Chalk a block full. What's a what chalk? What is chalk? I know chalk the... Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, on the w- sidewalk. The, the white thing on the blackboard. Sidewalk chalk. I think it's like an adverb or an adjective, right? I mean, chalk. Chalk. Chalk full of. Yeah. No one has ever asked what is chalk, and I need to know. I was chocolate. Chuck full of cum. Yeah, there you go. Chuck's full of cum. That's right. Not anymore. 
All right. So let's see. It says it's from. It could be from choke. Like, oh no, I was like, it could be from your cheeks being full, and it just like evolved. Cheek, cheek to like chuck. cheek full. Cheek, like your cheeks yeah. full. You know, like that kind of thing. It looks like a chuck cheek full. full of nuts, like my wife. It's tough. It says from Middle English chockaful, C H O K K E F U L. Uh, possibly from cheek, equivalent to cheek and full, or maybe from old French choqueer, which means collide, crash, and hit, similar to uh, shock. Mm, I don't know what either. Yeah, yeah. Cheek might be something, but yeah, I find these words in, and they stick with us. Yeah. It's yeah. all old Latin and English. Yeah. And what the fuck is pig Latin? I know it's Ixne on the ombre, but what the fuck is that? Yeah, I think it was like a secret code that you use around dumb people. Because it, it's pretty easy to crack. It ain't like Morse. Right. Morse is tough. That's a serious code. You gotta do the, yeah. <laughs> um, but also, pig Latin. It could be like Latin. It's for like smart fat chicks. Pig uh, Latin. Yeah, yeah. That's good. My ex spoke it. <laughs> um, you ever think about Morse code like in Napoleon? You saw it. Sure did. They hit you with the lantern like from far away. They're like two miles away. And they go, yes. And then some queef with a tricorder hat goes. Ah! The invasion is happening, or whatever. Yes, man, would I fuck that up? I'd be like, "Was that two <laughs> flaps or one? Was that a half flap?" Oh, and you can't text the guy and go, "Was that a two flapper?" Because if you got text, you don't need the Morse. It's like George and Kramer. It's like high, uh, high tide, high tide. Yes, yes. It's very difficult. Yeah, and th the person on the other side has to too. Was it too short or too long? Right. And, yeah, that we. This is where we have to have moments of gratitude, and we really are living in a nice time. Yes. I mean, horrible time, but a nice time. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. The blurst of times. That's uh, Simpsons. Oh yeah, who's that? Uh, Andrew Jackson. No, no, that's uh, two Tale of Two Cities. Yeah, which is Charles Dickens. Dickens. Yes, Big Dick. Ends. Which uh, I never read, of course. But yeah, that Morse. That because then you go. I don't know if you got it. Let me do it again. And then they think, is this a new thing? Like, how would they know that? Because there must be like a. I missed that. Right. Yeah, it's right. gotta be like a hit me with again. I, yeah. I, I totally blink. Just like, yeah, there's shrugging. gotta be one of these. A shrug, a shrug, shrug Morse, shruggery, shrug code. Um, you ever read any classic novels? The big, thick, real ones. I've looked at them. I put them on a shelf. I've touched. Never read. How about the people that read? Like I know, like James Patterson, Rana. These guys have like read Tolstoy, and really? Tabakowitz. Who's got the time? War and Peace and wow. uh, Frankenstein. Well, I, I think before a phone, uh, I think before a phone, Goosebumps, whatever it is, <laughs> before a phone, you, you were like, thank God I have this. Thank God this book is thick. Right. You know, because you're like, I got a full life ahead of me. I need entertainment. I think that's why people read the Bible. I suppose so. Well, they you, needed answers. They needed answers and they needed advice and there was no YouTube. How do you tie a tie? I don't know. Let me check the Bible. Right. Yeah, I'd really like to read a real novel sometime. Yeah, you know what else is even crazier to me than the novels is like my wife's dad, I go visit, you know, once every two decades, and the dad will have like a, a book on the corner like, this is about the Franco-Prussian War. And I look at the bookmark, uh, Norman, and it's like a third of the, like a, a three quarters of the way through. Don't get me started. Sarah's family, her dad, her brothers still, they just consume books. And I'm a reader, but I read a book, takes me four months, and I got a few books at once, and I'll yeah. read two pages, put that down, read this book. Right, I do that and too. I read a good amount, but like so these guys just go, they read like uh, like Johnny Five. But are they retaining I water? Think they retain. I think they retain. I retain nothing. Me neither. I just, I'm like, I, I tell people, I'm like, that's my favorite book of all time. They're like, how about that one part? And I'm like, this, I don't remember that. No idea. That's why movie, I got to watch a movie 48 times to really I know. soak it in. It's wild when you rewatch a movie and you're like, I miss that. I miss that. I miss that. You're like, thank God I watched this again. I'm an idiot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then things are, things are weird when you watch a movie because you're like, oh, I didn't understand that because I wasn't old enough. I didn't have a wife or a marriage or a whatever, a herpy, you know, like you, you, you live longer, you experience more, so then you understand more. Well, this is the thing. You always think you're smart. Your whole life, you're like, I know everything there is to know. And then you're like, wow, I was full on retarded. Which means like, even right now, we're like, that is the dumbest I ever was in my life. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, we're pretty dumb. Well, that's the Dunning-Kruger is you, the dumb people think they're smart and the smart people think they're dumb. Uh-huh.
It's like a David Tell effect. David Tell, one of the funniest guys on the planet. He's like, I'm a hack. I'm an old cunt. I suck. I'm ugly. I'm bald. I'm gay. And then he goes up and murders with brilliant stuff. And then the the hack goes up and goes, yeah, you ever notice the difference between blacks and whites? <laughs> you know? And then... He goes, I'm the best comic ever. Right. Yeah. I okay, we gotta maybe we gotta we should take time to be like, I'm not so smart. Yeah. Or I guess so. It's, it's hard to you teeter. You teeter, but then the you're you're a smart cat, but there's also Ish. stuff we'll never know because there's so much information. How could you know it all? I know. And well, now we have too much information. TMI. I know. Oh, this Chipotle is really stirring up well, trouble. When you ordered it, I was like, this is going to be, you're not going to get through this. Yeah, well, you know, it's, we've talked about this before, but the lounge. What are they thinking at that lounge? It's like cauliflower, broccoli, chickpeas, hummus, pita. I'm like, you're just creating a gas chamber on this Southwest flight. I know, and Peter's a pumpkin eater, so you got to be careful with that. <laughs> All right, now we're really... Well, Chuck liked it. And they hate, uh, they hate animal abuse. <laughs> you still got that tag on there. Oh, shit, I was trying to hide it. <laughs> when I when you saw it the last time you went, we're living in a society. You want to get that meal, like, don't you? <laughs> I want to get yelled at again. So. How about this? Is this funny? I mean, I'm not as funny, but I think this is funny. It was what I meant. So my friend Erica is coming. My best friend Derek's wife is coming to visit. Derica, Derica, yes, power couple. Yes, power bottom. Oh yeah, and power so lines. she's. Coming to visit, spend a week with the kid, which is also funny because she's like in Seattle. She's like, I'm going, I got to leave for a week. And uh, they're like, and, my, and Derek's like, my, my wife's out of town for the week. Like, where's he going? Where's she going? Well, to see my friend. Oh, like, yeah. See your friend. Right. Yeah. Well, it's all, it's all pipes. And then Derek's mother, she's coming to visit because she loves her daughter in law. Oh, weird. Yeah, is a friend of mine, fan of mine, but that's. Derek's sister was my girlfriend. So my best friend's wife and ex-girlfriend's mother oh. are coming to visit. Boy, there's a lot of layers here. Isn't that wacky? It's like an onion. The more you peel, the more it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> but what a funny sentence. Well, yeah. I got a big weekend. I got plans. My uh, my best friend's wife and my ex-girlfriend's mother are coming to hang out with me. Wow, yeah. This is like a Neil Simon play. Well, it's wacky, dude. And then my wife is like, who's coming now? Right. What? <laughs> my ex-girlfriend's mom. Huh? Yeah, yeah you gotta hang happen? out with my ex's mom. Yeah. And then, this is funny, like, accidentally, incidentally, without trying to be funny, yesterday morning, I wake up, I send Erica a picture of my baby, because I'm like, he's smiling, he looks adorable, I'm like, you gotta see this. Yeah. Send this, and a half an hour later, I take a shit the size of the baby's leg, and it's green, because I had Fruit Loops the night oh, before. Oh, the old flippy floppy. So I text Derek, I go, I know you love big old pine trees, check this one out. I send him a picture of my big, long, green dump. Yeah. And then I have a moment where I realize, I'm like, how funny to have this sums up my relationships with these two people. Right. The wife, I'm like, here's my baby. And my buddy, I'm like, here's my dump. That's funny. It's like the angel and the devil. Both things I made. Oh, yeah. And without even trying to be like, this will be funny, I'm like, that's just who they are as people. Yeah, that's interesting. You don't want to see my baby. You want to see my dump. Right. And But one came out of you, one came out of Sarah. That's right. So the dump is more mine, really. Yeah, true, true. And you made it. Maybe maybe put a onesie on the dump. That is an insta stink. That smelled really bad. Uh oh. Well, then I had a, scratch and sniff. I like the idea of a onesie on a dump. is very funny. I think I could do that. I mean, if you kind of yeah, touch the dump, I guess. Yeah. And throw away yeah. the onesie. That kid's a little corny. <laughs> you need the dump to be like split at the bottom. Right. You need legs. We can do it. Like a snake tongue. We've done harder things. Uh, but, oh, you're in on this. I'm in, baby. Yeah, this is my idea. What are you kidding? What are you st- taking credit for my dump, baby? I thought you were just the writer. I didn't think you were going to participate. Ah, I'm down, that clown. I thought you wrote it and sent it to me to shoot. I didn't think you were coming over to slice the dump and oh, be in there. Oh, yeah, I want to produce. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this hoodie's got no pockets. I'm doing this all day. Don't you hate a hoodie without this? I, I do. I need the pocket, Jerry. Well, all my clothes are bad. I threw away three pairs of pants yesterday. They all shrink. I'm too, I'm too long. Nobody's my dimensions. Yeah, you're long. People that are 6'2 are fat fucks. They're right. big, fat assholes. Usually, I got the waist of a, of a preteen girl right. and the legs of, uh, you know, Takimbe <laughs> Macumbo. Well, you're, you're basically Jack Skellington. <laughs> You're Who's all, that? Oh, my God. Pull up a photo of Big Jack Skell. I don't know Jack Skell. The Nightmare Before Christmas? 
you know. Oh, oh I nightmare. never got into that. Yeah, it's a pretty good movie. Danny Elfman, Tim Burton, they they do a fine job. I like Burton. I don't I don't care for any cartoony thing. Well, I'm like, get out of here. It's stop motion if that helps. No, it doesn't help. All right, which is a little hard hard to for the brain that says it's stop motion. Huh? Uh, What's going on here? That's where they just keep putting it yeah. over and over and then yeah. they do a flip book. Yeah, me and my buddy when I was a kid, we I had a camera and we made stop motion animation films and it would take 13 hours of staying up, chugging coffee, doing math, move the hand. And then we go, hey, family, get in here. We're, we're big red-eyed and we look like crackheads. Family comes in. We go, here it is. Buckle up. Boop. <laughs> that was it. That was it. <laughs> Six seconds of, of horse shit with Superman going like, Right, and uh, we called the whole family in. We called a press conference. We called the paper. We called the news, and uh, it was not worth it. And then they all just went, "All right, yeah, and then they, <laughs> yeah, yeah." Why aren't you in school? Um, when are we? What were we talking about? Uh stop motion. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jack Skellington dimension. The, the clothes. Third dimension. Before that, we were on three D something. Glasses. Oh, uh, they're taking oh, a dump. Yeah, dump with the onesie. Yeah. There was something else there. You know what's weird is that a t-shirt is a onesie. When you think about it. I mean, I guess, but it doesn't wrap around your dick and balls. But, it's still a, but the whole point is a one. But I think the onesie is an outfit. I guess so, yeah. You're just t- you're winning the poo over there. Right, right. I'm it's got to wrap arrested. around the cock and balls. Right, okay. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesday's story is brought to you by Displate. Get all of your Christmas shopping done in one stop. Give every person on your list the gift of upgrading their space with Displate. Displates are metal posters that take just 20 seconds to install and won't damage your house. They come with a magnet that you stick to the wall, then the Displate sticks to the magnet. Easy peasy. I love Displate. I get a lot of old movie posters. I got a Vertigo. I got a taxi driver. They go... Right on the wall, and you know these New York apartments, they fuck you right in the ass on the uh, security deposit, so no harm, no foul, with license design for brands like Star Wars, Stranger Things, perfect gift for you and sports fans. Display has what you need to make the season bright. Save up to 30% off when you click the link in show notes. Discount will automatically be applied to your cart when you click the link, or use code TUESDAYS. When you visit Displate.com, that's Displate.com, code Tuesdays, or click the link in the show notes. Thank you. This episode is also brought to you by Blue Chew, folks. Tis the season to celebrate and pop that confetti, if you know what I mean, with ED medicine from Blue Chew. You'll have everything you need to have a good time. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers your prescription right to your door. It has the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can see whoever you want and Levitra, but in chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost. I love Blue Chew. There's here, nothing here. I love more around the holidays than sex. I yeah. haven't had sex in weeks, and uh, I can't wait to get back on the horse. And the horse is going to be a sturdy, strong horse because I got myself a few Blue Chews right by the side of the bed. You won't have to have that awkward in-person doctor's appointment either. Just sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of your licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll have your prescription in just a few days. Get on it, so you'll have everything you need for the holiday after party. You want to tell them how? Yeah! Oh, boy. I, tell you, you I was on like, Liquid IV. I'm an ass. Hey, BlueChew wants to help you have better sex, and we've got a special deal for our listeners Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code TUESDAYS as checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. Wow, that's nothing. That's BlueChew.com, promo code TUESDAYS. To receive your first month free, visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. BlueChew.com. BlueChew.com, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Liquid IV. Whether you went too hard with your buddies, you know about that. Oh, I'm hungover now. You're just, or you're just one of those people who never remembers to drink water. That's my wife. Liquid mm. IV is going to be your best friend. Just mix in one stick of powder with water and get hydrated two times faster than with just normal water alone. It has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink and eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. So you can bounce back from that Santa stumble 
bowl in no time. Mark, you've had this stuff before. I love Liquid IV. I keep a giant bag at the house. Grab yours. Right now, the Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier, sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco. Or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TUESDAYS at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code TUESDAYS at liquidiv.com. Yes, thank you. Support our sponsors. Support us. Thanks very much. Back to the show. Yeah. How about this? I fell last night. When's the last time you fell? What are you, my aunt? You <laughs> fell. You're like an old lady. Joe fell. <laughs> Call the police. I mean, I haven't fallen since I was two. Did you get up? <laughs> that commercial was huge. Huge. I'm falling and I can't get up. That was everything. Every time you Every hit the joke. ground, somebody said that. Every joke. That was big. Commercials were big. By the way, I got a lot of pushback on the pep rally. Did you go to your pep rally? Are you lying? What happened? I went, yeah. It was fun, right? Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> I had 48 people write to me and be like, you nobody goes to a pep rally, oh, you piece of shit like, pussy. But I didn't I'm go like, to all of them, but I caught half of them. I was there. We had our faces painted, wigs, the whole thing. I'm telling you. We had pep rallies. All right, all right. Uh, take it easy, Peppy. But no, we did them, but we got drunk as shit for them. Yeah, well, people did that. I wasn't not that kind of guy. But oh, okay, sorry. I got drunk later. Yeah. A lot. No, oh, we had pep rallies, we had assemblies, I was the mascot, we had big games, we had field day, we had the whole thing. And it was fun. Yeah. The cool kids were there. Yeah, yeah, well, they were on the field. <laughs> the cool kids Well, were the playing. pep rally is not during the game. I it's know. before the game. They were involved in the pepping. I was in the audience. <laughs> the pilot is in the audience. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, Pepsi Cola. yeah, pep rallies were cool. You guys are gay. There you go. Um, oh, wait, you were getting to something. Oh, I you fell. fell. <laughs> I fell. So last night, you know, New York, again, I don't know what percentage of our audience lives in the city. It's got to be 1%, 2%. Maybe two. I'd go 2% <laughs> milk. I mean, I do get recognized uh, in the city a lot. Never in Queens, a couple here and there. But like in Manhattan, I feel like I- I'm like uh, your Barbara Stanwyck out there. Yeah. <laughs> I went Stanwyck. Um, I can't, my, my mind is mush. I don't fell. sleep anymore. I fell. Oh, so the apartment, it's one of these, it's a two bedroom. So like the bedroom over there is 48 degrees. Okay. The bedroom over here is 375 degrees. Do you have oh. that in your apartment? Yeah, a little bit. I cracked those windows and I let it all circulate. I'm the same way. So I had the bedroom window open last night. Sarah's in the living room with the baby. You wake up, I'm just fits it. It's 150. I'm like, this is crazy. I hate that. So in the dark, I go to open a window, and there was like a baby toy. It was a classic comedy. It was like, boop, boop, and I, I go back, <laughs> and I just lost the balance at 3 in the morning. I go, oh. it was like Kramer, and I, I, I swept like a bunch of photos. Oh. A book came off the shelf and, and boinked me. <laughs> you had a little uh, nub there growing with the birds around it. Yes, and Sarah's in the back room with the baby going, honey, Hello? Somebody? What? Because you just think it's a robber. You don't, just, sure. you don't think like, oh, I bet my husband fell through a table just yeah. then. Yeah, Only yeah. a robber is kicking over. Wow, stuff. that's crazy. You're a dad now. You're officially a dad. I mean, I had a little Christmas tree thing that broke. It stabbed me. I was bleeding. And wow. I'm like, I got no glasses on. My feet are Jesus. up. And I couldn't get up. I was like in the corner like. Oh, my <laughs> God. I mean, this is a Griswold moment. It was total Griswold. And uh, I was almost crying because I'm sad in general. And I had to go in there and be like, it's okay. It's, it's nothing. Wow. I just broke all the lamps and all the stuff. But uh, I, I, when's the last time you fell? It's been a while. And it wasn't that funny when I did it. It was just like, uh, it was like a Biden. You just get right back up. But you sweeping everything off in the dark. And you fall at night. It's a different game. Oh, my God. And then uh, good luck going back to bed. It's not like you're like, okay. I mean, I had shards of glass and a, and a you know a framed photo of Ryan Hamilton stuck to my back. <laughs> That's head, jizz. Yeah, head bruise. And... Wow, I'm sorry. Jeez, we got to get you a life <laughs> alert, I guess. Well, Greg Giraldo had that great joke. He's like, uh, you know you're getting old when you fall and it's just concern. Right. You know, when you're 17, you fall, everybody laughs at you. Yes. But then when you get older, you're like, is he all right? Shit, should we call somebody? Right. Yeah. yeah, it was it was it was it was a rough evening. Did you get back to bed, by? It's a lovely evening together. Yeah, I went back to bed, and uh, it's very isolating because the baby's you can't sleep with the baby because it dies or whatever. So she's out there with the baby. You do shifts, so I'm just sleeping in a bedroom alone, bleeding. Wow, man, it's like my ex. So <laughs> let me just ask you this: 
and I've never asked this in real time mm. with Bill Maher. Great show. But you always hear, hey, when when a person has a baby, they become more selfless. They become more uh, open to the world. They forget about their, their ego goes away a little bit because you have to give your life to this nugget. Ah. But people always say that after. You're right smack chock in the middle of it. Do you feel it happening? Uh, I mean, we're only a couple months in here. I mean, once you leave the house, not so much. I mean, I'm, I'm just regular podcasting. Yeah, right, you know, you're walking right. around. I mean, with the baby, of course, you're, you're, you're I'm cradling and, and milking and all the stuff. But then once you're like, okay, so you got him. I'll be back. I got to go to work. Yeah. I can't just be sitting here like, baby. Right, right. I gotta, I gotta come up with the yuck yucks. Yeah, I mean, right. of course you are in your mind. You're like, this is good. That's a good episode. People will watch it. Uh, we get uh, advertisers. That's good. People buy the tickets, and now we'll have money for the baby, which is nice. Gives you some sense of purpose. Yeah, but I think a lot of people are just full of shit with a lot of stuff. Uh, I guess so. It's like I don't like. It's like I said. I'm like, the baby sleeps in you for two hours. I can't just be like, look at that baby. Of Eventually, course. I'm like. Now, let me see what's going on on Insta. He's sleeping. Right, right. Let me look at Instagram. Well, that's what's great about you, is you live in reality 100% of the time. I is, try to. It's got to be hard on your brain noggin. Well, it is. It's like, it's it's one of those things I'm like, people are like you f- always say, like, you forget about everything. Likes <laughs> don't matter anymore. Social media won't even matter. But I'm like, well, it matters more. I have to make uh-huh. a living. Yes, need to provide. I got to, yeah, I got to sell tickets so I can pay for health insurance. Yeah, reality. I don't understand what, what you're talking about. Right. And these people, by the way, all these people that act zen about that stuff, you just sit around long enough, and about four hours later, they're like, "Did you see that yeah. video blew up of that guy?" And I'm like, "Interesting, you know about that." Well, I don't even. I think four hours is a stretch. I yeah. give it a half hour. Right. All of a sudden, they're like, "That fucking special sucked." And I'm like, know. "So you're sitting around watching specials of people you don't like?" Exactly. Exactly. That's interesting to me. I thought you were completely out of time. Yes. Yeah. It's always they always tip their hand just a little bit. We know several people like this. Oh, I don't even look at anything anymore. Yeah. 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 And then they're like, "Oh yeah." Yeah, I got called a bald-headed fag, and I'm like, "This really? You saw that? Yeah. What did they yeah. send you a letter? Exactly. Well, everybody's full of shit. They're like, I have no time. I I have out of time. Everybody always says I have no time. And then they go, Do you see House of Cards? I binged all 19 seasons last night. It took four days. And you're like, I thought you had no time. I talk about this all the time, and also, and I this I was present and aware of leading up to this. And I kept saying this to Sarah, like the nine months she was pregnant. I'm like, because every day we're like, I'm busy. I can't get to this. I got that. And I'm like, we're going to laugh our asses off when we have the baby, thinking about that we thought we were busy. Uh... And it, it, that is a real feeling of like, that's hilarious that I thought I was stressed and busy before this. I know. I know. It's really like, because you think like, oh, I got to do this, 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 and this. And then the baby's crying and you're like, okay, well, I'll just do that. Another time. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of like when you're in high school and you're like, Jeannie didn't talk to me. She hates me. I don't know why I became Cosby. <laughs> Jeannie, she wouldn't talk to me. Or, or Sarah or Mary, they won't even look at me. The, my life is hell. I can't get laid. I'm 13, whatever. And then you're like, boy, those were nothing. But at the time, then those walls of the high school, you're like, this is the worst thing on earth. Well, that's what I, this is where I've been gotten good too, because the baby will go crazy, and I have to tell Sarah and remind her because it feels like forever in the moment. But I'm like, he's never actually screamed for more than seven minutes. Oh, okay. But picture me screaming in your ear for seven minutes. Of course, you're like, ah! but then you're like, oh, all right, that's that's past. Yeah, and he's just the most adorable person I've ever seen. Sure. But sure. in the moment, you're like, so, but it helps to be like, okay, this is going to be maybe 10 minutes. Right. Same with a bad set, we always say. Yes. It's like you do a corporate gig, it's the worst thing ever, and you're like, this is 40 minutes and I'll be out of here. Yeah. With yeah. a check the size of my sister's ass. Exactly. You just got to get through it. That's a small check. But <laughs> um, it's true, but, oh, I had a thing, but the check, I still got your sister's ass now, throw it off. But, Sorry. Uh, more than seven minutes. Oh, yeah. You know, you ever want to just tell a baby? That's the problem with babies. You can't tell them anything. But I always want to tell a baby, like, what are you getting out of this? This is this is a bummer for you, too. You're just screaming. You don't have to do any work. Right. But can't reason with the little guy. Well, they don't know how to communicate. That's yeah. all they have is the screaming. So but, it's hard. But then how do they live in the woods? You know, when some guy was, uh, uh, you know, in the 18... 18- 12, uh-huh. and he lived in the woods with a log cabin, and he barely is surviving. It's snowing. He's freezing. He's wearing a pelt. 
And then the baby screaming, and you're like, the, the coyotes are going to hear it. Like, how did that live? If I was a coyote, I'd go up. Oh, there he is. Whoop. In the window. Eat it. See you tomorrow. I think that happens. I think a lot of coyotes, Native Americans, I think they'd scalp that baby up and yeah. start a casino with it. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I don't want to be an Indian giver, but you ever heard <laughs> that old story about, uh, you know, those old tales where they go, all right, there's a guy on the train tracks. He's going to get hit. There's another guy on the bridge overlooking the train. Mm -hmm. You could push that guy over, stop the train, and he wouldn't hit the family. Or do you do nothing? You know, those old, uh, yes. those like morality tests. Uh huh. Well, the craziest one is you're in a bunker. You're in like a war torn country. You're in a bunker. The Nazi troops or whatever are above you. You're in this bunker underground with like 50 people in it. And okay. everybody's like, shh, we can make it. If they don't know we're in here, if we make a peep, they'll kill us all. Uh huh. But there's one whimpering baby going, eh, eh, eh. Ah, and it might just start screaming like Larry. Uh oh, yeah. I don't know if you want the name out there. Yeah, I'll bleep it. All right, they start screaming. What do you do? Do you kill the baby, your own baby, your own flesh and jizz, to save the fifty, or do you let it scream and kill everybody? I kill the baby. Really? Uh, yeah, I'd like to kill any baby. Yeah, frankly. I guess that's true. But I mean, if you could save forty-nine lives for one life, kill it. And think about the love you'd get after. Like, hey, thanks for killing that baby. Well, because the baby's not going to survive if he's crying. If if Himmler and Goebbels are playing poker up there and they hear the baby, they're going to kill everyone, right? Yeah. So you sacrifice one to save 50. Agreed, but... The baby's going to die either way. I don't know if it, you got the the sand to just... Well, well, I'd be the guy that was like, what do you say we vote on her? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we vote on killing the baby. We get the unanimous vote. And then we vote... We draw straws or smallest dick to see who's gonna kill him. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're you're the governor because they're like, well, this guy really cares about the people. The Commonwealth of the bunker. That's right. Tennessee, <laughs> chock full of morality. What call me crazy? But we are on today. Am Woo! I gay? No, I felt felt all right. I got an idea for after. Remind me that I had an idea. He has an idea. Yeah. Light bulb. Wonder where that came from. Oh, I just Edison. realized that. He had an idea for the light bulb. Yeah. I never put that together. Remember that old joke? You ever hear the old joke with the uh, Alexander Graham Bell? He invents the telephone. He goes, all right, I just invented something. Stand over there and uh, get on that thing, and then I'm going to be over here. You call me on this. The guy goes, what, what's the number? He goes, one. Ah, uh, that's fun. But it's funny because the guy knows there's a number. Right, right. Yeah, how would he know? <laughs> uh, that's funny. Well, something know, like that. Some kind of joke like that. I don't know. It's weird. You ever watch like a Lassie or, or Andy Griffith, those old shows? Of course. There was no numbers on it. It would they would just spin that thing and they'd go, operator, get me the Manson family or whatever, and right. then they'd hang it up. That that was a kooky system. Yeah, no numbers, and I'm old enough that I, I've said this before. My comedy notebook have seven digit numbers in them. It's yeah. like Tom Dustin six eight one seven nine two zero. There was wow. no beginning of it, and you'd leave like answering machine. Remember when we were kids? There was no answering machine. Right. It would just ring, and you'd be like, all right, they're not home. Yeah. yeah. And I was part of the answering machine. Like when my parents got one, they were like, we're going to do this as a family. So they'd be like, you've called the Norman residence with Rick, Liz, Hart, and Eric. <laughs> and, then, uh, you know, everybody would go, hey, I hate your family. Or, Get out of the neighborhood or whatever. But still, it was fun. <laughs> now, does your, do you have any tapes? Did you save any tapes? No. Like my mother, my mother has a tape. Small. She has a tape of uh, my grandfather left a voicemail right before he died. So she has it. Whoa. Because it's not like digital. You, you got to go like pop it into a tiny player yeah. and put it on a tiny headphone right, right. and listen to his tiny voice. His tiny dick. George is dead. Call me back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, remember remember the, the all I wanted as a kid was that little man, note to self. Right. Pick, pick up the laundry. Joe's got an idea. Light bulb. I love that little thing. Yeah, those are fun. I mean, I still use them all the time. I did it right before the show. Oh, yeah. Gonna call Erica. That's right. Um, you got to set a little alarm for yourself. Well, that's what's weird, too, about like when we die, our boys will have 750 hours of us saying racial slurs and stuff. Like, my grandfather's dead, and there's like a little tape of him being like, hey, Deb, it's me, it's Dad, call me back. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And there's like 11 photographs, but we'll have 
75,000 hours and photos of our dick and balls, the inside of our asshole, and uh, yeah, all of our opinions and thoughts. It's good. I don't know. I don't think Louis C.K.'s kids are thrilled. Uh, but that could be for other factors. But yeah, yeah, that is scary. A lot of photos, though. A lot of great photos. Yeah, you can really watch somebody grow up. Yeah, yeah, and it all just flies by. I was looking through my photos the other day, of course, on a plane, addicted to my phone, and uh, I was like, oh, wow, meeting the lady in Amsterdam. That's just crazy. I was just in Amsterdam, just right in that city. I know, and it only exists in your mind. Yeah. Well, that's why travel's always been so thrilling and exciting, and I'll miss it forever now. But yeah, yeah. it is weird that you th- can go. Go to those places. You can just dream it. It doesn't seem real. It doesn't I, seem real. When I was a kid over in Whitman, Mass, small town, used car capital, white trash, fucking beautiful town. Chocolate chip cookie. I never, Chuck, ah. I never thought it was possible to be in Paris. It yes. just felt like not a possibility. Totally. Or Amsterdam or Peru or Ecuador or fucking wherever. And uh, it's really like makes you... Happy and proud that you get to those places. 100%. And anybody can just do it. You can just, the internet, it's also, you don't have to call the travel agent. Hey, Nancy, book me a straight flight to Tahiti. You what? could do it. You could do it. Like a lot of people, too, are like, well, we don't have the money, but it's like, well, you could quit smoking or soda or whatever or for save up. a week and save up and go to Paris. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember as a kid, I'd look at like a picture in a magazine and go like, wow, Maui. Look at that. Who goes to Maui? Maui's a thing, but now you don't care because you can just swipe through everything. But as he, I'd be in a dentist's office like, wow, look at that. Prague. What the fuck's Prague? Well, I felt that way even more with South America or like I went to Wales and Ecuador and Peru because those weren't even like places you heard people going on TV. Yeah. Like you yeah. think of like London, Paris, Italy, the right, right. or Hawaii, but like to go to like Ecuador. Nobody was like talking about Ecuador as no. a kid. You're like, this is really crazy. That felt like Indiana Jones shit. Like who exactly. goes there? Yeah, yeah. That was a that was a different time. It was all so far away. And but your your brain really built it up too. Mm. You know, you're like, oh Ecuador, what's up with that? And you just start fantasizing about it. Well, I told you, I'm gay, and I'm a girl, and I, I like pigtails, but uh, I, I was in Paris. I was traveling with Louie and uh, felt isolated, because at that time, we weren't hanging out much, mm. and I was with Mackie and Rachel, but everyone was doing their own thing. I was away from my wife, my family, the whole thing, and I went out walking, and I saw the Eiffel Tower. I started crying. Yeah, yeah, wow. I cried, Jerry. Similar thing. I went to Paris with Doug Key, and he cried. Wow. And maybe it's a New England it. thing. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, and it's also funny to think, like, it's all going on right now. Like, Paris, yeah. they're just walking around fucking somebody. Well, they're like, we are in New York. People are walking around taking photos, and people from Paris are like, what are you taking a photo of? You yeah, fucking true. Which I try, we, I think I've said this before, but I always try to take a moment of gratitude when I see tourists taking photos of, like, a street sign. That to them, they're like, whoa. Fifth Avenue. Look at that. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, I like to take a shit on this side. We work here. Right, right, right. Well, I've said it before, but... I don't know, it must have been 15. I was shit housed. I was at a Mexican restaurant, I remember. Don't remember why I was there, what I was doing there, but I went to take a piss. All the graffiti's on the bathroom wall, and it said, the hottest girl you've ever seen, some guy's tired of fucking her. And I went, wow. <laughs> and then I jerked off at the urinal. But it's so true, and it's the same with Fifth Avenue. They're taking a photo of the sign. You're like, I hate this street. Move it, all, move it along. Wow. That is really... Uh... Interesting. Is it? Or are you fucking with me? No, I'm serious. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm putting it in perspective. Yeah, isn't that wild? But that's like all these they, all these people have their own... Pro- it's inside-outsides. You inside pair your insides outside. to their outsides. Yeah, like Brad, get inside. Yeah, there. Brad Pitt is like, oh, God, my life sucks. I'm a piece of shit. Exactly. Is that it? What, the- oh, I thought you gave us a wrap it up. No, no, no. I, oh. I agreed with you. I just pointed oh, you oh, a thumbs oh. up. I thought, I thought that was like a, what are you doing? You fucking piece <laughs> no, of shit. No, no. Pontifa, or yeah. what did I grab, divulge? What's the word? Well, I had Keep another, going. that reminded me of a thing that was another Elaborate. thing, but I can't remember what it was now. That quote was reminding me of a, a gay quote or a moment or something gay. It was some kind of, I watched some kind of director or actor be like, ah, I'm a piece of shit, whatever. Nah. But did you ever think, like, does Daniel Day-Lewis go like, ah, I blew it in that movie? I think so, yeah, definitely. It's weird to think about him being like, ah, that wasn't great. Well, you know what's fun about Daniel Day 
Jewess is uh, you made that point earlier about uh, you know the people are like oh the baby it's the best thing ever happened you're not gonna look at Instagram you're gonna move on with your life you're gonna grow up and then you're like two two minutes later they're like oh you see that guy you know threw the bottle and it flipped and landed right <laughs> you know that whole thing. Well, Daniel Day Lewis, uh, I think he's a psycho. I think he's totally crazy. Yeah, he's not well. It doesn't seem no. Obviously, a talent, but he's a kook. But he's like, I'm retiring from acting, and I will be a cobbler in Paris. Right. Flew to Paris, opened a shop, started cobbling shoes. Within three months, back to Hollywood. Right, right. So all this horseshit romance. Uh, I'm gonna live out a fairy tale. Reality still sets in. Well, don't you feel like too? And I feel like this with. Comedian with with and I'm going to sound pretentious, but like artists and maybe other fields as well. But like, you are that you pursued that because it's in you. Uh-huh. Like you should be acting. And this is what I've said to Louis, who's taking a year off. I'm like, but you you're a comedian. Great point. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. That's like you did that because you had a need to express yourself in this way. It's a compulsion. Yeah, like Daniel Day Lewis. I'm like, you should act. Also, yeah. it's it's criminal not to because you're the best one. Exactly. It's like a disservice to everybody. I know, but they get this bullshit romantic thing in their head where they're like, that'll be it for me. Like Tarantino's like, I'll do 10 and close the book. Like, why? Keep going, dick. But they're insides. We're our outside. They're yeah, insides. Yeah. They're like, I don't want to make it anymore. I, I don't want to be a pirate. I, I get that, but I just think they'll be less happy right. by not, I mean, the cobbler. Who wants to cobble? Well, DDL, to, in his defense, it is, it's like why De Niro's not as good as he once was, because it's like, ah, I got to lose weight. I got to figure out an I accent. I I, and then see. those guys, like Danny Day Lewis, so it seems like it would be hard to deal with, but like, yeah. he's got to go into character for two years. He has a wife and shit. And he's just like, I have to be a Nazi for two years and right. smack you around. Yeah, yeah, that would be hell for her. She's like, I got to live with a Nazi now? Great. Yes, I got a Blinken in my fucking house. Yeah. <laughs> Which has got to be so annoying that, like, fucking P.T. Anderson has to be like, okay, in this scene, Mr. Plainview. I know, I know. I need you to do this. And he's like, I don't care about you today. Right, you're like, right. oh, fucking piece We're all of going shit. to craft service. What is craft service? <laughs> I've never heard of such a thing. <laughs> like, all right, I'll see you there. Well, Get I think about this the with the only blood, too. Like, Paul Dano. <laughs> Which say what you want about him. Some people don't love him. I think he's okay. I think he's, he's going to play you in a movie. I think he's. I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, Dano is a good one. I think he's 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 great in some stuff. I don't love him in other stuff, but he takes chances. Whatever the fuck. But him and there will be blood. You're like he he should just get checks from the government for making that movie. Because Daniel Day Lewis is in character, dragging him and shoving mud in his face yeah. and slapping him. Yeah, like the idea. I, I would be petrified. If like I was like uh, cast in this movie, you're like, oh my god, I'm in a P.T. Anderson movie. Yeah. This is so exciting. And then you show up, and and fucking Daniel Day Lewis is like across the room, and he's just <laughs> smacking you and putting mud in your face. I'd be like, this sucks. And they did that 48 times, by the way. And they then they reshoot it. And they say cut, and he's not like, you okay? Yeah, Paul? yeah. You all right? He's, Sorry, I didn't mean to rough you. you up. Yeah, he's like, fuck you still. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be horrible. <laughs> That's true. And then you're going to have to go dinner and go on a press tour with this guy? I'd be like, right. fuck off. I don't want to talk to you ever again. I know. If you took some queef from a Young and the Restless who calls himself an actor, and you put him in that movie, they'd call the police. Oh, forget about it. It. Yeah, but Dano can handle it. Dano Hanno. Dano it. But uh, yeah, yeah, Dano's good. But you, these, uh, I mean, they, they had Jim Carrey was in uh, Man on the Moon. Oh, I saw that You ever doc. see that doc where they yeah. show him, he's always in character, and they all hated him. The director hated him, the other actors hated him, the writers hated him, the prop guy hated him. Well, he was horrible. He was horrible. I watched that. I'm really... Uh, I love Jim Carrey for his nice stuff, but you watch that and you're like, oh, you're an ass. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I don't, I've never heard Daniel Day Lewis, even if he's he's Daniel Plainview, but like Daniel Plainview has no business roughing up this uh, craft service guy. No, no. But like Jim no. Carrey's just showing up and like knocking over the craft and stuff. And you're like, this person makes like minimum wage. I know. Or Get whatever. Out of here. But he's an artist. I, I watched that and I was like, what are you doing? No, I couldn't That's watch awful. it. It was. So uncomfortable. It was cringy. I felt bad for everybody. And you want to just shake him by the shoulders and go, Enough! You're not that guy. We know you're you. You're I Canadian. Know. Shut I'm up. Like, you're ruining my life. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, um, yeah. I had a, a friend who's, uh, you know, I never want to tell his stories, but he knows Jim Carrey. And oh. I, I told the story about Jim Carrey. I'll tell you what it is after. But Jim Carrey was like, I wish everybody could get rich and successful so they could see that's not the answer. And I think that's a, a valid point. Sure. It's like what we're talking about. Sure. Is um you know 
everyone, you think like, oh, Brad Pitt must have it great. This person must have it great, but they have their own problems. But then this person who's a friend in the business was like, oh, Jim Carrey should not be saying that publicly. He's like, that's embarrassing. Because mm. you're like, you are speaking to all these, like, uh, I understand it doesn't solve your problems, but like, you're saying this to people that are like, Roofing houses yes, and are divorced yes. and have are barely getting by. They're paycheck to paycheck sure. doing manual labor, and you're talking out your butt, literally. Right, and you're right. worth seven hundred million dollars. You're like, <laughs> you got to say that to your shrink or to your buddy yeah, who's yeah. also an actor. That makes sense. It's like, folks, having three hundred million in the bank isn't all it's cracked up to be. Let me tell you. And you're like, okay, that's great. I am behind on my rent, and uh, you know my union just ended. And you want to be like, so just give it away then. Give it all away. Right. It's not everything. You, it's not uh, going to make you happy. Then give it away. Yeah. Like you, you built a, a studio in your house where you could paint all day. Yeah. I can't help but notice you have seventy-five thousand dollars worth of paint. Yes. In your in your airplane hangar. Yes. I exactly. Just feel like, you and you're know. wearing a leather jacket that costs ten grand or whatever. So yeah, it's like those kids who are like. This university is racist. They won't let any people in, and it's it's gross. And they're like, well, why don't you give up your seat? Well, what time's lunch? <laughs> right, you know, there's right. a lot of that going on. Yes. So, so buttons. My dad used to always say that. If I said so, he'd say so buttons. Ah, that's Button. something. That's a pretty good pretty good bit. Yeah, pretty good bit, especially your dad doesn't speak. So when he says anything remotely fun, you're like, woo, baby, how about that? Uh, that's all he would say. I'd be uh, like, okay. so. We wouldn't be talking. I'd be like, so. And he'd go, so buttons. Mm. And I'd be like, right, the Patriots, huh? And he'd be like, so buttons. Ah. And I'm like, all right. I think he might be autistic. Possibly. Everyone's autistic. That's what it feels like. Spectrum. Spectrum silver. Mobile. <laughs> Wait, what's Spectrum Silver? <laughs> That's the uh, medicine. Oh, Spectrum I don't know the silver. medicine. You know, it's uh, A to Zinc. Ah, not familiar. Any farts, we got to <laughs> wrap this thing up. Uh, this is one of my favorite episodes ever. I love it. It was funny and profound, I thought. Um, yeah, good stuff. I'm, um, out. I'm out of juice. I got nothing left. I know. We got to do a bonus. Oh. The bonuses are the best, though. That's where we really get loose. We really get cuckoo. We've been trying different things. Call in. Tell us what you want to hear. I'm down for heads up if you're feeling kooky. Oh, we can, get, we can play some heads up, play some games, get wacky. Um, January 11th through the 13th, I'll be... Oh, Merry Christmas, by the way, for God's yeah, sakes. Yeah, happy Hanukkah. Happy holidays, Merry Kwanzaa. Christmas, Kwanzaa. Yikes. January 11th through 13th, Tacoma. Go to Punch Up Live slash Joe hyphen list. All my dates are on there. There's uh, unique, whatever the fuck you call it, specific stuff, content. YouTube, <laughs> doing a bunch of bullshit on YouTube. Uh, Poughkeepsie, January 19th to the 20th. By the time you hear this, hopefully the ticket link for Comedy Mothership this is the best club in the world. I can't get a fucking ticket link. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> February 8th through the 10th. Going to be some fun special guests there. Hell yeah. And um, I got a bunch of shit. Pittsburgh, Raleigh, Tampa, uh, Traverse City. Oh, nice. Uh, Missouri. What's Columbia, Missouri? St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> bunch of them coming up. Comedian Joe List, Punch Up Live. Check out my YouTube. Here, here. Uh, first things first, I'm at the Beacon in one month, about January 27. Let's go. Yeah, let's hoo, go. Hoo, hoo. Open for Jerry Seinfeld there. It's nice to be able to headline. Maybe I'll ask him to open. I'm also at the Lyric in Baltimore, I mean, Birmingham. Then the Strand in Shreveport, Louisiana. Not bragging. Uh, then, uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff in January, Tampa, Phoenix. Um, Salt Lake City. I'm coming to Kentucky. I'm coming to Jacksonville. I'm coming all over your face. It's going to be a hot tour. You don't say. Check it out. MarkNormanComedy.com. Have a happy holidays. Chock full of nuts. What do you got? I just want to remind the Tuesdays, next week, we always take Christmas off. Oh, for God's sake. Just so no one gets upset. But we're going to do a Patreon uh, preview episode, right? Where we just kind of show like yeah. a couple like audio, it's just audio, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> just like last year, we did this last Mark year. Mark and I are not listening anytime Chuck's talking. I'm yeah. like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do we say that? But I know that he fell. Just so anyone on the, you know, that's what's coming out. It's not going to be a normal episode yes. next week. No this episode is, this has been next on week. For a long ten years. Yeah, ten, we've we never... have not done an episode the week of Christmas <laughs> for ten years. Yeah, Chuck was a it. boy in his father's balls yeah. the last time we did an episode. <laughs> we've yes. never done it. Shelby yeah, was don't alive. yell at Chuck. Don't yell at us. <laughs> and fucking be with your family, for God's sake. I know. Christmas is on a Monday, so... It's Christmas. You, know. you lose an hour of jizz jokes. You'll yeah, be all right. Yeah. On a Monday, and check I out, was arrested. <laughs> and oh. check, check out my podcast, Fun Bearable. We're doing a bunch of Christmas podcasts this month. 
We just had my buddy Brian Rupert on from the podcast. Oh, <laughs> big Rupert. He's his, a great dude. I thought his first name was Rupert. His last name is Rupert. Brian Rupert. He's like Kramer. That just blew my mind. I know. I always call him Rupert. Some people call him Rupp because it's R U P P E R T, but mm. it's pronounced Rupert. I don't okay. care for Rupp. Uh, but we had him on Rupert. for a, a Christmas episode. Every year we do an episode where we pitch new Christmas uh, specials and ideas. Nice. And okay. I pitched a terrible new metal Christmas album. Ooh. Limp Bizkit, <laughs> Kid Rock. It was really awful. So nice. check it out. FunBearablePod.com and at yes, FunBearablePod yes, on social media. All right. Peace. Christmas, Christmas. No one wants to be. Really?